guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Walker Ford, sunny Clearwater, Florida, because guess what? We got another Ford com uh, comparison. We are gonna compare the outgoing 2019 Ford Escape SEL trim to the all new, totally redesigned from top to bottom, 2020 Ford Escape SEL trim. So let's talk a little bit about the outgoing Escape. The outgoing Escape, believe it or not, has been around since 2013 been almost seven years since this was brought onto the streets by Ford. A lot of things have changed in the overall SUV segment. People's interests, technology, the way they drive, the way they handle. What you're going to find is, is that when I first looked at the 2020, just like you, I was like scratching my head. I was confused. I didn't know what was going on with it. It looked like a car that just was bigger. Ford has done a really great job when we're going to compare the outgoing 2019 to the new 2020, not only from overall styling, but also the fit, the finish, and of course the technology piece and powertrain options. So let's go ahead and dive into this small SUV known as the Ford Escape. So on the 2019, the outgoing, you could see very, very large headlight design, lots of silver in there, a little bit of blacked out, but the rest is really bright. You have your daytime running lamps. And then as we drop down, we have a fake vent, which we're definitely gonna zonk. I don't know why we keep going over this, zonking that. And I'm not really even digging this larger uh, lamp area down here as well. A Little too much on the size. I wish they would have made that a little bit smaller and just filled it more with the black. Now, as we come across the grill, this is that outgoing horizontal grill design flat silver with the shiny chrome bits, your Ford emblem, you drop down, you have the flat silver down here, so that's gonna match very nicely. And then some flat black, very, very tasteful, very clean. As we go up onto the hood, two nice rises in the hood, and then you can see the drop off. I'll actually show you on this side, the drop off as it comes down to the headlight design. But this is, like I said, 2013 this was first seen. Now we're at the new 2020. Now, yes, when you look at it, it does look like a Ford Focus, which has been kind of enlarged. The front end of the Escape is now wider. The car is longer and it has a longer wheelbase. You can see how they went. Still very massive headlight design, but totally redesigned, like the overall style, with a little bit of gloss black. And remember, I'm comparing this to the 2019. And am I now saying I'm in love with this? Not necessarily, but definitely a big improvement. As we drop down, this is what I'm talking about. I love what Ford did. No fake vents. They made the lower lighting a lot smaller. Looks really clean. We come across the front end of the business and you can see definitely that lineage back to the Ford Focus. A lot of people are calling this the catfish mouth design. I'm digging it compared to the outgoing one. Gloss black, a little bit of shiny chrome. You have your flat silver. And then of course, when it comes to technology, you're gonna get that Ford 360 that's gonna, that's gonna keep you covered technology-wise from all four corners. Now, when we go up under the hood, I like what they did. They did more of a traditional rise to the center of the hood. And then you'll also notice on the edges, not as much as a drop-off to the actual headlight housing cleaner look definitely has a more aerodynamic look to it but overall height wise i thought that this nose was a lot lower than the outgoing one but it's not but let's go ahead check out the side of the 2019 and the back and see what's different all right guys side of the, the 2019 remember this is sel trim we're going to come around the bend you can see the flat black that's been brought around the fender opening there is our flat silver wheel, very boring wheel. So I am gonna zonk the style of this wheel, especially on an SEL trim. It should be a, a little bit more going on, but this is a 17 inch wheel, 235 on the width, 55 series sidewall. As we continue down the side, Zonkville. So we got a fake vent to match the fake vents up front. Just take that off. I don't know why they put that there. Looks like something from Pet Boys. You do have the gloss black on the mirrors. As we come up, flat black roof rails on the lower side, no crossbar. So you would have to add that in. You do have some chrome trim around the bottom, which I like. And I like the gloss black. It goes well with the overall black on the car. And that flat uh, black lower sill down there is going to take a beating as you're going down the road. We get to the rear quarter window. 
pretty good size shape. You know, the larger the quarter window, it's gonna let more light in. It's gonna help with people sitting in the back, just overall how they feel. No really roof spoiler coming off the back of the uh, 2019 Escape. There's our SEL trim. You can see the dated taillights. Remember, this goes back to 2013. As we drop down, very, very flat. You do have, look at that, Ford can do it. Twin exhaust, flat silver, a little bit on the bland side, but you know what? At least it's got the dual exhaust that are functioning. Let's go ahead, check out the 2020 and see what's different. All right, guys, time to go down the side of the 2020. Coming around, we do, do still have the flat black around the fender opening, but if you notice, it's got a little bit of a nice crease here to give it a little bit more definition. Wheels, much, much better. You know, when we looked at this by itself, I was like, wow, they're bland, but when you compare it to the outgoing one, 18 inch wheel, machined aluminum, the gray really works well with the particular color of this Escape. If you're wondering what's going on with numbers, 225 on the width, 60 series sidewall, gonna give you a nice, soft, quiet ride as you go down the road. As we go down the side, they did spill the paint onto the mirrors, which is great. I am gonna zonk it. I would like to see the turn singles built into the mirrors, especially on an SEL trim. Now what's weird is that they did the opposite. On the 2019, you had the chrome trim on the bottom. On this one, you have the chrome trim up top. I wish they would've went chrome chrome because the flat black is looking a little too bland. With the chrome on the top, it actually fits really well. Now you have nice low roof rails and you get the crossbars. So that's gonna save you money. You don't have to buy them like you do for the 2019. I like what they did with that lower sill panel down here, how the belt line raises up and then it goes back down, gives it a little bit more character, a little bit more style. Keyless entry, which the other one did not have keyless entry. I like the way you can see the difference in how this flares out and the size of that quarter window. Smaller, but it definitely looks sportier. I think you would agree with me. You have that low roof spoiler extension, which you did not have in the 2019, and definitely on the 2020, loving the taillights. Love the taillights. I even like the escape badge here, even though I'm not a big emblem person, it just looks right on the back. As we drop down, we have flat black. That's gonna take a beating from those kids that are pulling out their soccer equipment and whatnot and just banging it all over the place. Flat silver, a little bit more black, and then look, once again, Ford can build exhaust that they don't have to exit out the bottom. So those are functioning tailpipes, very, very nicely done. You can see the very large reflectors, which I understand why, they're, why they are there. Um, they're just super, super large. I know the DOT requires that to be there and it kind of kills the look a little bit with all that red reflective plastic, but definitely an improvement, I'm gonna say, from the 2019. Let's pop the hoods and see what we're working with power-wise on these two escapes. All right, guys, we got the hoods popped. We're gonna zonk them both. They have prop rods. I wish they would just go to hydraulic struts. What you're looking at on the outgoing 2019, that is an inline four turbocharged engine, 1.5 liter, so it's an EcoBoost. That is turbo talk for Ford. You're looking at 179 horsepower. It's made it to a six speed automatic transmission, front wheel drive, zero to 60 in about 6.1 seconds, weighs around 3,600 pounds, and MPGs, you're looking at 23 in the city, 30 on the highway. Now, when we switch gears and we move to the 2020 Escape, you're gonna see some differences. First of all, you actually get an engine cover, which looks very attractive. You're also losing a cylinder. So instead of it being a 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine, it's a 1.5 liter inline three EcoBoost engine. It has cylinder deactivation, so it could actually run on two cylinders. That'll give you MPGs in the city 27, on the highway 32, so you're seeing the improvement, 180 horsepower, 177 pound-feet of torque. It could actually tow up to 2,000 pounds, and you're just gonna get better drivability because guess what? It's made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission instead of a six-speed. But while we go ahead, we're gonna get behind these, fire them up, and see what they sound like. All right, guys, we're inside the 2019 Ford Escape. I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, what's the MSRP on this? Now, let it be known, when I say MSRP, there are major incentives and rebates. You definitely want to call Tracy at Walker Ford. 
they want to find forever homes for these 2019s. But MSRP is $30,500. Let's see what you get for the money. Now to the door panel, there's a lot of dark material. Looks a little bland. They have some silver accents, but you know what? The armrest is soft. It's going to be easy to clean, um, but just nothing really eye-catching there styling-wise. Now when we go to the dash, the soft material on the door continues on the dash. Very large AC vents. I don't mind this um, dark gray material to kind of break everything up. What I do mind, and I'm going to zonk all day long until the day I die, is this dash. First of all, I don't like the way the dash has this extended part to it. Don't like the screen, the placement of it, and there's no navigation or anything like that. You can see the harder plastic and just the way these radio controls are. I'm going to say it again, it's dated. Remember, we're talking about 2013. AC controls to open and close the vents are all the way up here. Kind of weird. As we drop down, you have your engine start stop on the corner around here. Here's your AC controls. You do get dual climate, which is a nice touch. As you keep working your way down, you get heated seats. We have a, if I could open it up, 12 volt, and you have a standard USB and a little cubby. Another little cubby here. This is perfect for Jolly Ranchers, I'm telling you. Get some grape, get some cherry, some watermelon. Those are my favorite. Two cup holders. Here is the older style key fob. Little on the large on the large side. Kind of fell out of my pocket a couple times, so just something to be aware about. This is the shifter that's going to be controlling that six-speed automatic transmission, your good old-fashioned style shifter. Electric e-brake. I do like the silver trim. Harder plastic, though. Another little cubby. You could put a bag of Lay's, maybe stack some Twinkies in there. Softer armrest with the stitching. Open it up. You got a little coin tray, or this is good. For breath mints, you're on that first date, maybe it's a blind date, get the breath mints ready. You can lift this up, you get another USB and plenty of storage for all sorts of gifts and games. Close that up, seats. I actually like the style of the seats, believe it or not. Full leather, love the stitching, and I just like the design. The lower portion is nice and long for taller people to really support underneath your hammies. And other than that, there is a ton of room in here. It's just funky where I'm sitting and where the dash is. It's just a really weird setup overall. Plenty of headroom though. Coming over the business end, I'll show you behind the wheel of this 2019 Escape. All right guys, business time behind the wheel. You, like I was saying earlier, you got full electric assist for the driver, the back and the bottom, very nicely placed. Steering wheel has a great thickness to it. It's soft, it feels good. I like the flat black buttons, easy to understand. And then the dash setup is just straightforward and it makes sense. Analog tack, speedometer, cooling gauge, fuel gauge, and then you have that nice display in the center where you could toggle through tons of different information. I know a lot of people like to have a digital speedometer and there it is. But overall, feels comfortable. I just don't like the look. And overall, I'm just not enthused to be sitting here. But why don't we check out the back seat and see how your passenger is going to be loving the 2019 Escape. All right, guys, back seat time in the Escape. Surprisingly, there's a pretty good amount of room, especially when it comes to headroom. On the back of the center console, you do have AC vents. They are nice and large. There's just nothing really special to look at. They do give you a 12 volt. So that's the good news. You could go to Walmart, go to Target, get yourself a USB adapter. You'll see on the 2020 things have changed. The seats do not slide, but they do recline. So you just lift, lift the handle and they will tilt forward and backwards. When it comes to armrests, we pull that down. You know me, what am I going to do? Zonk. Why do they put the cup holder this way? Turn it. There's no space really for your arm. You can put it in your arm holder. But anyways, overall though, I do still like the stitch work on these seats. They look really, really good. Why don't we check out the cargo area and see what type of room you have in this 2019 Escape. All right guys, time to see what type of space we have in the outgoing. Press the button, electric assist, but it is a little slower. What I like about the Escape is how low the load-in area is. The only problem is, and I'll have Tom show you as we back out, is look how far the bumper extends. Thank God they put flat black here because if this was painted, you would scratch the heck out of it. But you can see the amount of room. I'll lift this up. Let's see what's underneath. There's your spare underneath there. Not a lot of sport storage if you're going to hide things from your wife. I wouldn't do it underneath there. You do have a nice cubby on the side and a little cubby over there. Those seats are going to do a 60-40 split, which is really nice. The only problem is you got to go over to the seats to actually fold them down. But still, lots of good usable space. Let's get to the best part though. We're going to go ahead and check out the 2020 and see what's different. All right, guys, we're inside the 2020 Ford Escape. I am eating my words. When you're sitting in this 2020 Escape compared to the 2019, you see what Ford did different 
to bring up the overall style, the quality. Now, you're, if you're wondering, well, how much is this? This one comes in at a price, $31,200, so a little bit more, same SEL trim for the 2020, but let's see what you're getting to the door panels. Now, door panels, there is a, still a lot of dark black material, but they did bring some silver near the door handle and whatnot. I still gonna zonk that design. I don't like the design that they put in the back of the door panel, but I do like the open area in the pockets down there. Very large areas for drinks and all sorts of things, books. Maybe you got an old school map, maybe an abacus you could put down there. Here's really where the, the ball was knocked out of the park. I love the dash setup. It's much more SUV style. So the dash is very far forward, nice, consistent height, soft material. There's more of that silver trim to match what's on the door. You have that iPad style screen, but I like the way that it's mounted on the lower side via sort of like Audi-ish. It's an eight inch screen. This one has navigation where the 2019 did not. Nice clear graphics. You could go into all your different settings and whatnot. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto on both of these. Slim and trim, um, audio controls. I like the silver on the AC vents. The controls down here, it's a little black, hard plastic. I wish they would have done something a little different with that. I'm gonna zonk that, but very easy to understand. Blower fan, you are giving up the dual climate control. So I am gonna miss the dual climate, but you have a heated steering wheel, heated seats, no ventilated seats. For $31,000, I would like to see an attempt of ventilated seats. Nice large cubby. You got a USB-C, a 12 volt. I like this trim here. Even though it's plastic, it sort of looks like dark wood. There is your rotary dial that controls your eight speed automatic transmission. And you also do have the updated key fob, which is very nice with remote start, which is a good touch. Electric e-brake. This is gonna be able to put you through different modes, which the other one didn't have. And then you have a nice soft armrest. Uh-oh, there's no little tray in there for your breath mints on your first date, so or your blind date. So you're gonna to have to put them in there. Plenty of room, you get a bigger bag. That means more chances, if you have bad breath, you'll have a mint. You do have a USB in there, so that's good. And then these seats are just as great. I like the design, I like the style, the stitch work, and they're so soft. That's the great part about it. Overall though, seating position is good. I'm six feet tall. I got plenty of headroom and I'm glad that they went, they kept the headliner light. Nice light, open and bright. Come on over here, I wanna show you though behind the business end and show you what's new for 2020. All right guys, it's 2020 and guess what? You get three memory settings on your Ford Escape SEL. That was not even a thing on the 2019. So nice to see that addition. Steering wheel feels about the same, same soft leather, same basic controls, nice and flat black. I like the silver trim here. Little bit of gloss black. It's funny how a little bit of gloss black and some silver kind of brightens up the whole steering wheel. The actual instrumentation is different. Now this one does not have the 12 inch digital display. I wish it did, but you do have your analog tech, analog speedometer. I don't like the way there's no bezels around those two gauges. You do have your coolant and your fuel. And then of course you could scroll through all sorts of information in the center. You have your um, digital speedometer, lane keep assist, emergency braking, a compass there. Those are things that are even more so than on the 2019. You also have your different modes. So remember, you have normal, eco, sport, which is nice, huh? You wanna race your escape. You have slippery. That can mean a lot of different things. If there's like ectoplasm on the road from Slimer, Put it in slippery mode, I promise you that, it'll, it'll save you. And then finally, deep snow and sand. So nice to see that there's gonna be parameters that change transmission-wise, engine power delivery, to make sure you don't get stuck in the muck. But why don't we go ahead, check out the back seat and see what improvements there are. All right guys, we're in the back seat of the 2020 Escape. You can see what they did with the seat. So they cut out the back to give you more leg room. Now what I did was on purpose, I left the seats further back just to show you that even when the seat, look how far the seat is back. It's even further back than the driver. I still have plenty of leg room here being six feet tall, plenty of headroom. Our command center, they didn't really spruce it up any. Um, still got your basic AC vents and you still have a 12 volt. I'm gonna zonk it because I would like to see a USB in a 2020. Seats still feel great. Let's see if they fix the armrest. Yes! They listen to Rady's Rise. We got our horizontal cup holder. Nice soft material. Here's another thing, guess what? The slide, you like that, huh? And then they also recline. I could have made a comment, but my wife probably would have killed me. But anyways, 
Great improvements back here. Let's check out the cargo area and see what kind of space we have back there. All right, guys, time to check out the cargo area. Now remember, the Escape, the new one is wider, it's longer, so there should be more room in here. And guess what? Joe Rady is right. More cargo space, it's wider, and they also made some additions. If you look on this side, we do have 12 volt accessibility, which is really nice, especially if you take this to the beach. If your kids got one of those big rafts, you're gonna be dead by the time you blow it up with your own lungs. Get yourself an air pump, plug it in. Seats are gonna do a 60-40 split. I do wish though, I'm gonna zonk it, I do wish that they had some type of push button to release it. I know you wanna see underneath what's underneath. You can see the spare underneath there. That's as high as it goes right now. But what you could do is you could take this out and you can use it as a surfboard. Or what you could do is you can actually raise the level. So you put it in here like this, and now the floor is raised a little bit higher. Let's say you need a little bit extra room. Watch this. Surfs up. Now the, the floor is a little bit lower. So you can see how Ford has really thought that through. Let's see how fast it closes. Definitely quicker than the 2019, but if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get to the best part. Let's take these two escapes for a spin. Right, guys, we're gonna start off in the 2019 Ford Escape. Remember, both of these are SELs. This one, obviously, like we talked about with the overall setup, is going to not have that newer technology of any cylinder deactivation or anything like that. The one thing I automatically zonk every time I get into one of these 2019 uh, escapes is I don't like where the dash is located compared to where you're sitting. I showed you earlier when we were doing the in-car section of uh, the filming, just how far the front of the windshield is to where you're at. It's just too much, too much space don't like the way the overall feel and look is. You can see where they brought the bar up in the newer Escape, the 2020 Escape, when it comes to interior materials and whatnot. Now, from a softness perspective, armrest is nice and soft. The seat is like a sitting on a pillow. Um, and even the tops of the door panels are very, very soft as well. Visibility out that front windshield, even though it's really weird setup, it's very, very good. The A pillars have been pulled. I don't know, even know if you could even pull them any further apart than having extended off the car. That's how wide the opening is for you to look out the windshield, which is a good thing. Gauges are simple, easy to understand. Um, analog tag, analog speedometer and whatnot, but you know, still a vehicle that guess what? If you want maximum incentives and rebates, you can get them right now because obviously Walker Ford wants to blow these out to forever homes. So you're gonna definitely get a better deal on a 2019 than a 2020. That's just common sense really, but still smooth. That six speed automatic, it does not shift as fast or efficiently as the eight speed automatic. Um, I just think that the newer one, what we're gonna find is it's gonna just give us overall a more sporty feel as we're driving. All right guys, the overall driving dynamics in the 2019 Escape is gonna be a little different. I'm gonna turn it into this bend here. A bit of body roll, going rolling on throttle. A Little bit of understeer and traction loss from the front wheel drive setup. With the six speed, it, it shifts smooth. It's just not the fastest of transmissions and obviously this is not going to be a race escape by any means, but what's surprising is there's more grunt from the three-cylinder than what's in this one. So it really uh, helps that way that the technology with that three-cylinder, you're going to get better MPGs and you're going to get better performance with one less cylinder, which is, I know, mind-blowing, but that's how technology is, uh, is playing the game here. Very smooth, even overwatch over these expansion joints soaks them right up and this is really a vehicle that you could drive for a really long time and you're not going to feel sore it's just overall the setup inside is not my favorite of vehicles i don't like like i said the dash where the gauges are the center console is very very uh, rudimentary compared to the 2020 you saw it's 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 more fresh it's more 21st century and I think when you have them side by side, you can really see the difference and what Ford has done with the new Escape. But we're gonna go ahead, get back to Walker Ford and swap seats and get into that 2020 Escape. So I'll see you in a split second. Right, guys, we're in the 2020 
Ford Escape, like I said, we're comparing the same trim SEL, and you know what? Right away, I'm liking this even more. It's crazy how when we just did a review of this on Radies Rides by itself, I wasn't really sold on it. I was like, eh. But when you look at the old Escape and this Escape, much, much different. The seats are even more comfortable, more supportive. And when you look around, the quality level has just been raised greatly, especially when it comes to the infotainment system and the whole dash setup. This looks like a dash, a normal dash. Doesn't need to be where the, the windshield is extended 50 feet out in front of you. It feels like a traditional SUV, like this small CUV setup as it should. Visibility is still great, even looking out the back. And on throttle, this is where you're gonna see the difference. The performance in this Escape with one less cylinder is greater than the one we were just in. That's, to me, is really the proof, is what I like to say, is in the eating of the pudding. That's what you realize is when you get into this and you drive it back to back against the old Escape, that's where you really start to appreciate what Ford has done. When I was just looking at the Escape by itself, I was like, oh, it's just another SUV, big deal. I don't like it. But when you compare it to what the old Escape is, it's like, wow. Now, this one I wish had the 12-inch digital display. It does not. And I'm still not in love with what's going on with the door panels. It, the design is a little interesting to say the least. And I am gonna still zonk that, but the center console with the rotary dial transmission, there was once a time where I hated these. I get it now. And I think it looks sharp in here. It's got some that nice brushed aluminum look to it. AC controls are easy to get to, easy to understand. And the placement of everything just seems better in this 2020 Escape than the 2019. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and merge onto this highway here. And you'll see that merging is so easy with that eight-speed automatic. We're off and running. Very smooth. Same amount of wind noise as the 2019. So I am gonna zonk that. I wish they would have done something a little bit more with the sound deadening and the insulation to cut down on some of that wind noise but I guess it's not more so that's a good thing but I just I wish it was less it should be less on the wind noise so we are going to zonk that but steering wheel feels great good feedback coming from the front end of the car and just very smooth going down this road you really start to appreciate the extra length the extra width and the different wheelbase than the outgoing Escape. That makes for more room on the interior and everybody can enjoy that from not only you, the driver, or your passenger up front, but also the passengers in the back and the amount of cargo space that you have as well. We're gonna go ahead and see how she handles into this left-hand bend on the brakes. Wow, it, I'm telling you, they definitely retuned the suspension. Suspension has been reworked because you are getting better feedback from the front of the car, not as much body roll. And I just, the ba body roll that you are getting, it's like you get the roll, but then it holds nicely. So I'm very happy to say that definitely with the way that this overall Escape is laid out, it's gonna drive better, it's gonna handle better, you got more room, and better fit, feel, and finish on the interior. Sounds like a win-win-win situation. Of course, if you go 2019, you're gonna get massive incentives and rebates, but definitely call Tracy at Walker Ford because they still wanna find forever homes for these as well. So give her a call and they will work the magic at Walker Ford. But speaking of Walker Ford, we need to get back and wrap this up. So I will see you in a split second. All right, guys, been another magical day. Here at Walker Ford, definitely gotta thank Frank Walker, Weston Walker, Tracy, Benji, Mark, Austin, Greg, the whole crew. I'll have to admit, this opened up my eyes. I hope that this review opened up your eyes because having the two side by side, you really get to see and appreciate more of the improvements. Is this perfect? Of course not. What vehicle is, but definitely a move in the right direction. 
If it's comparisons that you want to see like these on Rady's Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you'll be worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Rady's Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Rady's Rise merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns McGee, getting two escapes in one shot, one take. His mind has changed about the 2020. We'll see if it continues about his life overall. Will there be life-changing moments for Tom Moshner? We'll find out. But just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.